So it's February and we're celebrating a new iPhone launch. Obviously not the new iPhone 17. This is the iPhone 16e, Apple's new entry level smartphone. I've got mine on order as I'm making this video. It should be arriving tomorrow on launch day. I'll probably make a video all about it, comparing it with the rest of the lineup. But if you're picking one up for yourself, these are the 10 things that I think you should do first, especially if you're upgrading from an older iPhone SE. Okay, let's get into it. A new feature on the 16e that wasn't available on the previous SE model is the addition of lock screen buttons. These make a lot more sense on a full screen device because they sit at the bottom of the screen where the home button used to be, making it easy to access quick controls. By default, the button on the bottom left toggles your light on and off while the button on the bottom right opens the camera. You might be happy with these, but it is worth knowing that you can change them to a wide range of different functions. To do this, tap your screen to wake it up, then tap and hold for a second to enter the lock screen edit mode. Tap customize at the bottom of the screen, then choose lock screen again. You'll see your two lock screen buttons at the bottom, each with a minus button next to them. Tap the minus to remove the button that you no longer want, then tap the plus button to see the full list of available controls. Take a moment to scroll through and decide what function you'd like to add. For example, if you frequently use translate, you might decide to replace one of the buttons with that instead. Once you're happy with your selection, tap done. Now, the next time that you access your lock screen, you'll see the new button and you can long press on it to activate that feature from the lock screen. It is also worth mentioning that one of the available options here is shortcut, which allows you to run any shortcut that you've previously created. And there's also open app, which lets you launch any third party app directly from your lock screen. The iPhone 16e comes with significantly more screen real estate than the previous version, which in most cases is a good thing, but there is a downside, especially if you have small hands. Reaching all the way to the top of the screen to access things like control center can be difficult. And since you'll need to do this often on your new phone, there is a setting that you'll want to enable called reachability. To turn this on, go to settings, tap accessibility, then choose touch. In this menu, make sure that reachability is enabled. Now, whenever you need to reach the top of the screen with one hand, simply swipe down at the bottom of the screen and reachability will lower the display halfway down. This makes it much easier to access anything at the top of your screen. Do you ever watch these tips videos and think, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If so, you should definitely check out the brand new training portal that I've just launched, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 100 tips for the iPhone with another 100 being added over the next few weeks, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order or you can and pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone or your tablet or home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description of this video. This tip is going to be super basic if you've previously owned an iPhone with an all-screen design, but if you're coming from the previous generation iPhone SE and you're only familiar with the home button, there are a few gestures that you'll need to learn. So very quickly, let's just go over them. First, you can tap the screen to wake your phone, or you can use the power button on the right-hand side. To unlock your phone, simply swipe up from the bottom. The great thing about Face ID is that you don't need to do anything. Your phone will unlock automatically just by recognizing your face. To access Control Center, swipe down from the top right corner of the screen. If you want to open the app carousel, which you previously accessed by double tapping the home button, you now just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and hold for a second. This will bring up all of your open apps. You can then swipe through them. And if there's an app that you want to force quit, simply swipe up on it to close it. On your old iPhone SE, you would press and hold the home button to access your voice assistant. This time around, you'll press and hold the power button instead, or you can just use a voice command. Also, now that you have Apple intelligence, you can type to Siri to do this double tap at the bottom of the screen and a keyboard will appear with Ask Siri at the top. You can then type your request and press return to send it. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. One of the main reasons the new iPhone 16e exists in the first place is because Apple wanted to ensure that every new iPhone that you buy from now on is capable of running Apple intelligence. 
I'm not gonna lie and say that Apple Intelligence is an incredible product just yet. It is still very much a work in progress. But if you've got or you're getting an iPhone 16e and you're in a region where Apple Intelligence is supported, you now have access to it. So you might as well give it a try. To enable Apple Intelligence, go to settings, tap Apple Intelligence and Siri, and look for the option that says turn on Apple Intelligence. Tap this and follow the steps to set it up. Your phone will take a bit of time to download all the necessary files to run Apple Intelligence, so let it complete the process. I've covered Apple Intelligence in multiple videos here on the channel, so I would definitely recommend checking those out, but very quickly, here are a few of my favorite features. First, I really like image cleanup. Open the Photos app, choose a photo and press the edit button at the bottom of the screen. With Apple Intelligence, you'll now see a cleanup button. Tap on this, then scribble over anything in the image that you want to remove and your phone will intelligently erase it. This works best on background distractions like a person walking behind you on the beach or something out of place in a field of grass. Another feature I really like is the reduce interruptions focus mode, which you can enable by going to control center, choosing focus and selecting reduce interruptions. When you enable this, Apple Intelligence will automatically prioritize important notifications while pausing everything else, ensuring that only timely and relevant alerts come through. It's essentially like a more advanced version of Do Not Disturb, but one that adapts to what's important without you needing to set it up manually. Of course, there are plenty of other Apple Intelligence features, and as I mentioned, I've made several videos about them already. You can check them out by clicking the links in the description of this video. I know I mentioned in the last tip that there are lots of Apple intelligence features and that you should check out my other videos to learn more, but there is one feature that I wanted to highlight all on its own and that's the inclusion of ChatGPT. To enable this, go to settings, tap Apple intelligence and Siri, scroll down to the extension section and tap ChatGPT. From here, enable use ChatGPT. You can sign in with your ChatGPT account if you want to, but you don't have to. The great thing about this is that ChatGPT is now fully integrated into Siri, which means that you can access it directly through voice commands. For example, if you want to ask a particularly complex question that you already know Siri won't be able to answer, you can bypass it by accessing your voice assistant as normal, but instead saying, ask GPT, followed by your question. Your Apple intelligence powered iPhone 16e will then automatically send the question to ChatGPT instead of Siri. If you want to learn more about how ChatGPT integrates with your new phone, I've made a full video explaining everything in detail. And again, you can find the link to that in the description of this video. One feature that I really wasn't expecting Apple to include in the new iPhone 16e is the action button, but it actually makes a lot of sense. The action button was introduced to replace the mute switch, which had been around for years as a physical button. Now, instead of just muting your phone, you can customize it to perform a variety of functions, making it way more useful if you set it up properly. To choose what your action button does, go to settings, then scroll down and tap action button you'll see a swipeable menu where you can browse through a number of preset options. These include basic functions like silent mode, toggling a focus mode, opening the camera, turning on the lights or recording a voice memo. But if you scroll all the way over to controls, you can tap choose a control and select any feature from control center, which gives you even more customization options. Even better, if you swipe over to shortcut, you can assign the action button to run any shortcut that you've created. Of course, you can set this up however you like, but it's definitely worth taking a moment to customize your action button to something that you'll find useful. One of the biggest improvements to the new iPhone 16e over the previous model is the camera. Yes, there is still only one main camera, but this time it's a 48 megapixel sensor, a huge jump from the 12 megapixel camera on the 2022 iPhone SE. Essentially having four times the megapixels means more detail in every image, which gives you greater clarity and more flexibility to zoom in and crop without losing quality. On a practical level, this means that when you're out taking photos, you don't have to worry quite as much about getting the perfect composition in the moment. Instead, when you get back into the Photos app, tap edit and crop your image, and you'll still retain a lot of photographic detail even after zooming in. One of the most obvious new additions to the latest iPhone 16e compared to the previous generation is the inclusion of Face ID. Thanks to the notch at the top of the screen and the removal of the home button, your iPhone now uses Face ID for authentication. 
Your iPhone will guide you through setting up Face ID when you first set up your new phone, but it is worth knowing how to adjust these settings later, and there's a few key options that are worth checking. All of your Face ID settings are found in the Settings app. Scroll down and tap Face ID and Passcode, and then enter your passcode to enter these options. At the top, you'll see a list of what Face ID can be used for. The most obvious one is unlocking your phone, but you can also enable Face ID for things like contactless payments, signing into the App Store and iTunes, and auto-filling passwords thanks to the Passwords app. If you wear a face mask, you'll see an option for Face ID with a mask, which you can toggle on. Just above that, there's an option called Set up an alternative appearance. If your appearance changes regularly and you want Face ID to recognize an additional look, you can set that up here. Below that, there's a Reset Face ID button, which does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you start over and set up Face ID from scratch. Another setting worth checking is Require Attention for Face ID. When this is turned on, Face ID will require you to physically look at your phone before it unlocks. This adds an extra layer of security because it prevents someone from unlocking your phone just by holding it up to your face without you looking at it. If you're concerned about security, I would definitely recommend keeping this enabled. Oh, and one last thing to mention, this feature was available on the previous iPhone SE, but since you're likely setting up a new iPhone, it is worth enabling now stolen device protection. To turn this on, tap into stolen device protection and enable it. You'll need Find My iPhone to be enabled for this to work, but once it's on, your phone will require a security delay if someone tries to change key security settings while the phone is away from a familiar location like your home or work. This gives you extra time to lock the phone down if it's ever lost or stolen, making it much harder for anyone to access or reset your device. I already mentioned reachability because the screen on your new iPhone 16e is so much bigger than the one on the previous model, but there's another keyboard related tip that might make typing a little easier for you. When using your keyboard, if you tap and hold on the emoji button in the bottom left corner, you'll see three options for keyboard positioning. You can set the keyboard to lean left or lean right, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, or you can keep it centered, which is the default option. It might seem like a minor change, but if you tend to use your phone with one hand, switching to a single-handed keyboard can actually make a really big difference. The new iPhone 16e supports 5G data connectivity, which isn't technically new if you had the 2022 iPhone SE, as that also supported 5G. The main difference this time around is that Apple is now using its own dedicated 5G modem, rather than relying on one manufactured by Qualcomm, as they've done in the past. Now this doesn't really mean anything to you as the end user, it is just an interesting fact. But what is useful to know is how to check and adjust your 5G settings. To do this, go to settings, then tap mobile service or cellular, depending on what it's called in your region. Next, tap mobile data options, then tap voice and data. Here you'll see three options. 5G Auto, this is the best option for most people. Your phone will switch between 5G and 4G, depending on the situation to optimize both performance and battery life. 5G On, this forces your phone to always use 5G whenever it's available, but this can lead to higher battery consumption. 4G, this disables 5G entirely, which might be fine for you, but it could lead to slower cellular speeds. If you tap into Data Mode, you'll see three more options allow more data on 5G. Your phone may prefer 5G over Wi-Fi and use it for data heavy stuff like software updates, backups, and streaming in higher quality. Be sure to check your data plan before you enable this. Standard, this allows automatic updates and background tasks on mobile data, but limits data usage for things like video streaming and large downloads. Low data mode, this reduces mobile data usage by pausing automatic updates and background tasks, making your phone prioritize Wi-Fi whenever it can. If you're unsure which settings to choose, 5G Auto and Standard will work best for most people, but it is worth checking based on your usage and data plan. So there you go, those are the first things that I'd be doing if I was switching from a previous iPhone 16 SE to the brand new iPhone 16e. What do you think? Any tips I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.